So the most important thing with the shoulder, the shackle, is to keep it in the correct position that we have control, nice and deep on the neck here. The most important thing with the blade is that it's pointing in the right direction, okay? You get a very, very sharp knife, you go like that, what's gonna happen? Yeah, ow, ow. Okay, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cut, right? You take that exact same razor sharp knife, you do this, what's gonna happen? Okay, a blade only works in one direction. Even if you were to move this slightly off angle, even if it wasn't completely flat, if it's not pointing exactly where you wanna cut, it's not gonna work. That's exactly the same for the wrist end. So the mistake that a lot of people do is they set up the guillotine in a good position. They'll set up the guillotine in the correct position. And as they go to connect the hands, they give equal emphasis to both hands, okay? So what do I mean by that? If you don't differentiate between a superior hand or superior arm relative to your attack, then you do something like this. You go into a position where they're both equal. Realistically, they're not equal. You have an assistance hand and an attacking hand. So when you do this, which is a, what a lot of people do because they feel stronger bringing the hand behind your back, is they go to connect the hands. This is in a perfect position for choking now. They go to connect the hands and this happens. Now you've gone from taking that knife to here where it can cut to here where it can't do anything. So now you've increased the surface area of your attacking spot by three, four, five times. Meaning, meaning that you're gonna have to put in five times more energy to get the same result. Most people don't have five times more power or more energy for the choke, which is why it feels like you can't get it. Okay? So, first thing I want you guys doing, make sure that you have the right spot on the neck. So for me, my sweet spot is it's about the first inch, inch and a half of my wrist from my thumb. So if you put your thumb out like that, where your thumb starts to move, this area is where you want the uh, opponent's throw. This is my sweet spot here. My opponent's sweet spot is gonna be right in the center on the track here, okay? It doesn't matter too much where it is, as long as it's not going over the jaw, which I didn't go really go into that detail, but a lot of the time when people bring this shoulder backwards, even if they don't lose the head, what happens is because of the angle, they'll squeeze into the jaw. So it feels like the person's neck is made of concrete, okay? Whereas when that shoulder's forward, it's going straight up into the neck. So that will help you. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much where on the neck it is, but I want it right in the center. So I have my sweet spot here, my opponent's sweet spot there, and I'm just trying to line them up with each other. Once you do that, you need to make sure that you don't lose that spot when you go the grip up. So my gripping position, my wrist orientation, is gonna be the, the perfect position from the moment I make contact with the neck until the moment I release it because I've transitioned, or he's defended, or I've tapped him, okay? That's never ever gonna move. So when this hand comes through to connect, I don't deviate this wrist at all. This hand does all of the moving. This hand does all the hard work because this is already in the perfect position. Now when you're doing this, what I want you to do is I want you to grab over the hand and the hand entirely. So you're not grabbing over the fingers. You can see my fingers here, you can see my wrist. You don't want to grab over the wrist. Any ideas why? Because I'm covering my sweet spot. So I move it up further, it's gonna be thicker, it's gonna be less power. It's gonna be duller, basically. So I don't wanna cover over the wrist. Any idea why I don't wanna grab my fingers or what a lot of people do is they'll grab like half and half fingers and wrist, uh, fingers and hand. There's, there's loads of reasons. One, it's slippery, very easy to slip off here. Two, uh, you end up grabbing onto your fingers, cracking your knuckles, stuff like that. But the main thing is, what I really want to try and resist here is a range of motion called deviation. I don't want this wrist to be moving at all. Any movement in this wrist here is gonna take away the power of what I'm putting into the neck. The further away from your wrist you grab, the more leverage over your own joint you're gonna have. So if I grab here, I pull backwards, this doesn't move. But if I grab here and pull backwards, you see how it wants to move? So what happens? I put too much energy, or I put more energy into keeping the wrist stable, which is energy that's being taken out of going into the submission. So I wanna grab as close to the wrist as I can without covering the wrist and therefore losing the spot. So, in position here, you're gonna bring your wrist up into the neck. You're gonna bring your shoulder into a good position. And you see again, when you're very, very tight here, so remember what I was saying about bringing the shoulder in front of your body? If the shoulder position is forward because your body is forward, what happens is it's very difficult for you to grip up because you're, you're very, very close. And then if you don't bring this forward, I move backwards to grip up and the head pops out. Whereas when I have this shoulder in a forward position, I can move sideways, still have that shoulder in a good position and connect my hands a lot easier. So it's a lot more forgiving. So we're gonna grab onto here and then all we're gonna do, because uh, just because we haven't grabbed the fingers and forced that range of motion, if I leave these fingers out, my opponent's gonna grab those fingers and start to try and get that range of motion again. So I'm just gonna close my hand. It's gonna tighten my forearm up. It's gonna lock my hand in place so it's not as slippery. It's gonna stop my opponent from grabbing onto my fingers. So what I want you guys to practice to begin with, start very, very slowly again. Don't worry, make sure you're sitting down because I'm 
one of the more common positions, a harder position to sit out from, so it's a better one to practice. Get your shoulder into a good position and very slowly just work on getting your hand into, into that position here. Main priority, do not lose your shoulder position, so keep that tension forward and do not deviate your wrist from the correct position. Okay, so start real slowly with this, look, coming into here, in here, in here. Now when you're here, obviously we're not looking at finishing the guillotine, we might not even get time to do that, we're just kind of working on some uh, troubleshooting here, some important details, but you'll feel from here, the amount of energy that you need to get there tap, because of the position of the wrist, your structure in the hand, and the position of your shoulder is very, very low. So once you're comfortable with this, you can start having, just have a little squeeze there, okay? This is, not, this is not how you would submit, but just to make sure that everything's on point. And again, feel the difference between, you know, turn your wrist like that and feel the difference. Let your shoulder come off and feel the difference. You're gonna feel how much weaker it is. Don't just take my word for it. So for people that haven't done this before, I just want you making sure the shoulder's in position, wrist is in good position, and taking that grip there, okay? Just very, very slowly. Now for the more advanced people, this is like a drill that I like to do, is just trying to move my hand from different positions to work on, uh, Regardless of where I set the guillotine up from, I always have the ability to connect that hand without having to think too much. So I'll do stuff, I'll be in this position here, bring my hand behind my back, connect her into the floor, leg, shoulder, his leg, and just bringing my hand from different positions and making sure I'm never moving that wrist off and I'm always able to connect up easily. So if you're a slightly higher level, you can take this to, to the next level. If you're just a beginner, just work on getting that good connection and not losing that wrist. Oh, and one last thing before I miss it out. Make sure, because another big one that a lot of people make the mistake with, make sure you're not grabbing your hand with your thumb. Okay? The reason for this is, is it doesn't allow you to get deep enough. So if you grab your hand, everyone can do this. You grab your hand like this and pull backwards, you're going to feel you, you have no grip there. You let go of your thumb and then you bring your hand deep. So you have this deep hooking position here. You pull back now and you can feel you have a lot of strength. So what happens is if you do this, because you have no power to pull back, you don't feel that you're weak, but you just don't put in that much force because you know that you'll lose your grip. So release this thumb and then more importantly, make sure, because a lot of people they'll go, oh, uh, I know that you're, you're meant to grab without your thumb. They grab without their thumb and they don't adjust the hand. Grabbing without your thumb alone does not change anything. It's what that allows you to do to get much deeper around here that actually gives you the strong control. Everyone cool? Let's have a go. One, two, three. When, when I come in, it's trying to get, make sure that I get yeah. that bit there. Because it yeah. seems like because of her neck's like that, I end up with her neck like that. That's that it. End. You just got to make sure that you're placing that, you're placing your wrist where you want it. So we kind of skipped the first hour of the seminar about the setup. But you want to place that in its finished position when you choose. All right, so then yeah. pop, bring there, and then push Connect the, the hand. Like that. Yeah. Shoulder forward. Don't move the shoulders, raise the hand. See how your shoulder comes up slowly? Oh, yeah. Just keep that shoulder down. Yep. Forward. There you go. Do not move your shoulder. Just lift your hand up. That on Vic. Yeah. <laughs> when you tap. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Shoulders forward. And connect the hand here. Like this. Okay. And then I'm going to... This doesn't move. I'm going to raise this. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When you're, this is an important concept for choking in general. So a lot of people make the mistake. Whenever you're trying to choke someone, it only works if you have something controlling the far side. Now if you're doing like in the gi, the gi's wrapped all the way around, so you're controlling forward and back. If you only control forward, you're just pushing something into the net, okay? But you're never gonna choke someone by doing this, you need something behind, okay? So if I was doing this, or if you're pushing into a wall, this is not a legitimate technique, this is just an example, okay? So for example, um, in fact, if I show you from uh, uh, RNC actually, so if I take your back quickly, Turn around. So what a lot of people do, especially when they do something like a short choke, when you do an RNC, you're tight enough with this uh, RNC <laughs> position, you're tight enough where your body naturally acts as a, as a wall behind. If you take something like a short choke though, a lot of people get to this position and they try and finish, they pull backwards like this. You're not choking someone by doing this. People believe and they have this feeling where if you have something on their neck and you pull it towards you or you pull through their neck, it's going to be a choke but that's only if you're pulling it into something. Stand up for me. So for example, turn around. If I was to take this, if I was to bring this hand through the neck, 
and I do this, of course I'm not choking him because I'm moving at the exact same uh, distance. I'm moving the exact same distance, the exact same time relative to my front hand as, 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 you know, as the choking hand is. Turn around again. So when you're going for a choke like this, this only works if the thing behind doesn't move at all or even pushes forward. Okay, so instead of doing something like this, which is what a lot of people do, focusing only on the choking hand, you want to do something like this. And the choke's going to be on straight away. Turn, turn back around. So when people are doing the guillotine, they're thinking, move the choking hand. Okay? They're not thinking about controlling that shackle. Okay? So when they do this here, you're not actually choking the person. You're just moving their head, which is fine. You may want to do that, but not if you actually want to get the submission. If you want to get the submission, there should be no movement on top whatsoever, only the movement underneath. Just a few people I've seen do that. So very, very important to understand, but a concept that extends throughout more than just doing the guillotine. Any choke, you need to control the front and the back. You just control the front and the back is moving. You're not actually creating any, you're not closing the distance between the two. Let's do a few more minutes on this. I'll come Can I have the question? More. Yeah, go on. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways to finish the guillotine, obviously, yeah. but what ways do you like to finish or what, okay, what so way were you finishing that first little set of, come, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Okay, so, uh, which one? When, when, I'm when you had the, when you're showing like obviously the shackle and then when you're fitting, were you okay. finishing here, yeah. here, yeah. here? So the, the way that, you, that I like to finish and like I, I'll send the guys like, I'd be happy to teach another class this week and like kind yeah, of, was, you, you know, like yeah. even maybe tonight or tomorrow morning yes. or whatever, like we'll discuss it, but uh, there's a lot more to this. Uh, and I do want to go over like a full set of, of, of finishing protocol, like what you're doing with the body and stuff. But in terms of just what you're doing with the hand, uh, like I said, with uh, a lot of people do a guillotine with this back shoulder position, they're fulcrum in backwards to get that wrist going up by pushing off the back of the head. What I prefer is keep everything tight here and my finishing is just by raising the hand. So okay. I increase the tension in the arm. So a lot of people make the mistake of uh, squeezing really, really hard here. Uh, I'm just gonna take the slack out of my arms. In the same way in a gi choke, you take the slack out of the gi, I take the slack out of my arms. So I just create a little bit of tension with the arms. You, my main finishing protocol is gonna be the raising of the hand. Okay, so that's how I look at the finish here. If my elbow, which is naturally where be the, uh, and naturally will be past the line of the neck, if this elbow stays where it is and his neck is here and my hand raise up in line with the elbow, then the choke's gonna come on. Now what a lot of people do is they'll raise this hand, well one, they don't raise the hand up, so it won't come on. Or two, they'll raise the hand and they'll collapse the elbow. So they'll do something like this. So for example, my elbow's in a nice high position, I have the guillotine on and they'll do something like this, like that where you're not actually choking the person, you're just going seesawing off of the neck. So again, in the same way that you shouldn't move the shoulder, because you're, you're, you're having to pull the hand relative to the shoulder, you're pulling the forearm relative to the elbow position. So if you look at my elbow position, it may drop slightly, but it's naturally gonna happen because I have force going on the other side, but it's not gonna collapse. So when I'm in this position here, I'm raising up, and you see how this elbow doesn't move, the shoulder doesn't move, the pressure's going into the neck. But that's combined with the protocol that I do for the legs as well. I look to extend the person out and weaken the neck, but we'll work on that another time.